two main things. Not very surprisingly, will we get better education and will we get happier kids, right? We generally think those two things are important. In particular, in closing opposition, we want to emphasize the importance of having like happy and socially functioning kids, which we generally think that in any context, sectors paribus, kids perform better if they are social, uh, socially functional and if they are happy. But we want to deal with all of this uh, together. I will interweave everything, all the rebuttal as I go along with these two main headings, right? So we look first of all at the issue of whether or not we would have better education, right? There are a couple of questions here that need to be answered. Like, is it possible for any kind of catch-up and movement within the system? And does this maximize like, the output of teachers in classrooms? And like, do we create the best possible classrooms with this model? So the first question is like, is, is it possible for movement within this? Or are we effectively condemning kids based on a particular test at a particular age to remain within that group like forever, right? So we get from opening uh, at the start that well, we're going to make this test for the beginning and it's particularly important, not in the least, because the, the cleverest kids will be able to learn much better and much faster. That would suggest to me that even if the less clever kids learn faster, they will still never be able to catch up. So the kind of mitigation we get let further down the line that well, we will have reassessments there's still no indication whatsoever that in any of those reassessments anything will have changed, right? Similarly, as Alex very clearly pointed out in, in the rebuttal, uh, at the point where you say we're going to have the same grading system or the same grading metric within these two different groups, then it's, ca it's kind of clear that for the lower groups in the, uh, in the system, whatever they will do will never ever be valued at the level of the other classes. That means that if you happen to have the one individual student you care about that has benefited from this absurd system or from probably from something else, and they have, um, and as a consequence, they've learned a lot more than their tests require, it will still never be visible because when they get their five within that system, it still isn't worth anything relative to the other to the other grades. So there's still no way for them to show that particular kind of achievement. So they're locked in that situation. But more critically, in terms of education, and that's what Alex really brings to this debate, is what actually happens in the classroom, right? It's all very well to look at like what kind of material we can have and so on, right? But classrooms at the end of the day boil down to the relationship between what the teacher can provide and what students happen to learn, right? What Alex brings you is that the finite resources that we all agree is a problem are maximized by the presence in the classroom of kids that can contribute different things, right? So when Alex speaks to you about the benefits of having only a couple of children who require special attention of a particular kind, teachers can devote that attention to those particular students. An example that is exactly about that would be if you have kids with ADD, right? Kids with ADD right? kids with ADD specifically require often extra explanation and peace and quiet. Bunching them together with 10 other kids with ADD <laughs> uh, doesn't sound to me like a magnificent idea, but it's very likely to end up there by the kind of metric that we have here. That's the kind of thing that creates worse conditions for teachers to work because they will never get access to providing that particular extra attention to these kids when their class is more or less a riot anyway, right? Um, but, but even furthermore, what Alex says is that at the point where we say that sure. the level uh, in which they can learn is based on this, the, the speed at which we can improve, that the change we make in speed is not compared to our ability to identify the specific needs of people who are learning slowly and finding out why they do so. They become less visible when we reduce the targets within the entire class and when they're less visible, it's more difficult for teachers to assess that. We on our outside believe that it's a responsibility of a teacher to reduce bullying and to make sure that they don't necessarily obviously go, that's a stupid kid, now we go to help a stupid kid because a stupid kid needs it, but rather teachers can do this in a clever way and help kids in a subtle way. But the ability to find them, identify the problems in the first case, derives from the fact that teachers have a, can see them and devote specific attention to them. Um, so, uh, yes, I'll take it over. Well, you talked about ADHD kids, but isn't it great that we group them together so we tailor the method that we have shorter classes, more interactive lessons, and that would be great for all of them. ADHD doesn't necessarily work that way. First of all, you want to have unique 
ADD classes. By the way, that we already we, we can already create those yeah. groups in the status quo. But when we have a massive class, we'll have maybe 10 kids with dyslexia, 10 kids with ADD, a couple of people who are unmotivated, and a couple of people whose parents have to be poor and therefore they can't get that kind of support, then you don't get the kind of things that you speak of. Um, sure. No, thank you. But also, the massive benefit of having children teaching each other, right? Which means that any time a teacher teaches something effectively, in the cases when kids are friends within the same class, they will probably help each other. First, first of all, because if the, the non-performing kids are cool, that kind of gives them status. But secondly, because just um, because the friendship within classes can often appear fairly randomly. When they are in the same class and they're exposed, that's probably more likely to create an interface between high performing and low performing students that are mutually beneficial. Now, before that. No, thank you. So essentially, the reason they can't win this debate is because they haven't shown any mechanism why, it, the, those, why the benefit of just changing the pace outweighs all the things we see in terms of, if, of finding individuality. Right. But then we have the equally important point about how important it is to make these, the kids socially adept. And the point where there is a correlation between like, social class and uh, the way they perform in school, at the very least in this case, we create classroom situations in which kids get to be with each other all the time. We hear from their side that, well, you know, they will still maybe form clusters and so on in the group. They're still closer to each other there than when we break them apart artificially and separate them into a different kind of less exposure. But secondly, teachers are generally aware of that. When they happen together, they can do things that make them exposed to be exposed to each other a lot through group assignments and so on. So teachers can actively counteract that when they are in the same situation. But finally, my favorite point, just because a teacher student performs poorly, that doesn't mean he's an idiot. In other words, just because a student like, is in a lower rung and you tell them they're not in a different group, they will still know. Children will find out that and they probably will feel unable to communicate with other groups. That goes right against the, their idea of like, this building confidence. Maybe kids know they are, don't perform as well, but when adults officially tell them they don't perform well, they'll probably feel worse about themselves. Because of that, we create happier kids and a better society, peace on earth and all the rest of the stuff. I'd like to speak to the speech and to have another round of applause for all of our finalists.